Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is providing an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 425. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. And I'm in the KIB studio today with Love of My Life, Mary Lou. Well, sweetheart, it's good to be alive. And I am so glad for all our listeners. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you guys and are praying. Um, we know that this is this is a very rough time. Uh, we've heard from so many across the, uh, the nation and the world. And we're also hearing, you know, you hear more in the area you're in. And my goodness, the... Uh, the catastrophes and things that are going on are just, it's heartbreaking. Um, but we serve a God that can do the impossible. Absolutely. And I believe we're going to see more and more of that because I think we're just in that, that we're in a transition to where God's taken us to a place we all need to be. Um, I, I know in the last, even before our last conference in the fall, God had me looking at de- deliverance ministries, trying to find, I just felt like I was supposed to just dig in and listen and read and find out as much as I could. Not because I think that we are, um, God's taking us into a deliverance ministry, but in whatever you do, you need to know this information. So that's part of what uh, I felt like we were supposed to, to talk about about today and and I felt like God told me this morning there's was, there's was an um, empowerment coming for us on the podcast to come against the occult activity yeah. and so we prayed this morning we received that whatever God wants to pour out through us and um, just break down the absolutely the walls of the enemy you know and for most believers and I think it includes us you know would uh, you can you can I'm using a military term here that when you talk about special forces and everything, they're called hammers in, uh, in the military. And, you know, to, to a hammer, everything's a nail. And if you, if you look at those in deliverance ministries, I mean, so much of what they run across is, is demonic that God uses them with. But the average person, the average ministry, you have to, if, especially if you're a pastor or whatever, you have to be a Swiss Army knife, which means you, you have all these different things. I mean, you, uh, you know, let's, let's just be blunt. In ministry, you could you could be cleaning the toilet at one moment and casting out devils at the next or feeding somebody that's hungry or praying for the sick or leading somebody to Jesus. There's so much that as, as we're studying these things, and I, I think there's there are some subjects that a lot of the body of Christ has avoided, even though they're very prominent in the ministry of Jesus because he's the only one who could do it and bring the solution and his disciples were able to do it. Uh, we tend to leave these things alone. And I think in the days ahead, not only do we need to make sure that we're clean and clear, but I, I think that occasionally we may run into people that we may need to do deliverance on. Uh, they're the average believer in, in, the, in the pew that eventually as, as, as God moves on them in the last days and he's confronting evil, he may have to do it too. And so I, I think we all need to be familiar with these things so that we know the tactics of the enemy and what to watch out and for. And we've, we've all been exposed to teachings that say that a Christian can have a demon. And we've talked about this many times that you can't be possessed. The Satan can't own you because Jesus has paid, paid for you. But there are doors that can be opened that give access um, to spirits to, yeah. to try to stop you, to try to hinder you. And um, let's just be honest, you don't hardly meet anyone these days that had this wonderful Christian background where they grew up. You, do, you meet some, praise God, the, that they've, they've been able to sustain that in their families where they, they had Christian upbringing. And, but uh, most of the people that you're going to come across, even in churches, have had some rough stuff happen. Yeah, either especially abuse the, the or, new generation that's growing mm-hmm. up. I mean, the stories you hear are heartbreaking. Well, and there's so many avenues that the enemy's got, so many more than, um, you know, what, what we had growing up. Because there, I think that the, they use the TV from its inception you know, to start to control the masses, but nothing like it is now and through video games. And, and we've all been exposed to it. Um, I've been excited as I've been listening to some of these younger deliverance ministers that, boy, they're calling out Disney. <laughs> they're calling out, you know, uh, the even the Christian music that has um, 
Well, there's just there's just all kinds of Christian music that's not scriptural at all, and so and and that and you would look at how they dance that we have turned it into entertainment. Worship is not about you; it's about what you give to mm-hmm. God, and we have turned it into entertainment like it's a concert. And uh, some of the some of the videos that we've been watching where they're showing, hey, this is what's going on in church services. I mean, my my jaw hits the ground. I'm thinking, I can't believe you sing like that and do those things and talk about some of the things that you're doing, and uh, calling that even a church. It's it's, a mo- it's almost like a nightclub that meets on Sunday morning. And guys, this this is this is not the way things are supposed to be. We we need to realize that there was a Great occult working in the 1960s. Uh, and in fact, I have ran across in my research where we, we've had, uh, I, was, I was researching the life of Jack Parsons and for a book I was writing. And uh, this, was, this book was actually written by an occultist. Jack Parsons was an occultist. He was the founder of JPL Laboratories, and, uh, but he was also a student of Aleister Crowley. And this guy pauses and he says, you know, I've studied Aleister Crowley, and when you look at the 1960s, it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's what it's known for. He said, that's a satanic rebel. And it was. I mean, every one of the rock groups were, were students from the Beatles to the Doors and many others. They were all students of Aleister Crowley. And that whole thing was a satanic rebel. Okay. Now, thank God at the end of that, there was a great move of God, that God countered it. We had the Jesus movement and many others. So, so uh, there was a great harvest that we saw in the 70s and 80s. But a lot of those guys didn't get saved. They, they doubled down and stayed in it. They grew up to be politicians, professors in universities, leaders of industry, uh, judges. I mean, the, the list is endless. And, they, and they, they never departed from that. And they're the ones. We're, we're in a second satanic revel revolution because they're trying to prepare uh, and I, I, I deal with this in my books that the, uh, the elite know they're only going to have one shot with introducing the son of perdition. And uh, Doc Marquis made a statement one time that really jumped out to me. He said, we, they knew then they knew that they, that he would not be revealed until they got the world into the proper position to be ready to receive him. That's what we're seeing today, Mary, and all this that's going on. The deconstruction of the family, the deconstruction of all morality, all these different things that we're seeing in the Western world is all about preparing the people so that the iniquity force is, is elevated worldwide to usher in the son of perdition. And it's like when they set the stage, you know, let's, let's use an example of a rock concert. Not only do you have to set the stage lighting and everything else, you have to have the groupies come in, you have to have, you have, to have the audience come in. And they're setting the stage so that everything is ready to where the world's going to be so full of demonic power that when he shows up, everybody's going to resonate with him, mm-hmm. except for the remnant. That's that's where we're headed. That's that's the purpose of all this. It is. It's so, like the Borg. They need yes. them all in the same mindset so they can operate as one. It's uh, the counterfeit of God's body. Yeah. And it's almost bringing us back to the book of Acts, you know, except for... Uh, the Jewish population and, and those being converted in, into Christianity, everybody was pagan. Everybody worshipped false gods. Everybody was demon. That's why, you know, what was freaking the Pharisees out is everywhere Jesus, when he was casting out demons, well, number one, until he showed up, they didn't even know they were there. You know, it's like when you start reading the book of Mark, one of the first things that happens is he goes to a synagogue in Capernaum, and there's this guy that's probably been sitting there Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, and he may have even been a leader in the synagogue for all we know, leader in the community. And Jesus starts teaching, and he cries out, you've come to, I know who you are. The demon manifests because the only one that had the power and authority to cast him out showed up. We're, we're going to see that again. I, I believe, Mary, that there's going to be times and and I remember the one time we were we were checking out at a grocery store, and this kid in in Goth turned around to me and hissed. That was a demon manifesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to start seeing more of that because we we are we are living in a in a demonically charged atmosphere. And uh, I think what we're going to be talking about today is to ensure that there have been no inroads to us. Possession is not a correct biblical term. We, we got that from the Catholic Church, and in fact, there's been some mistranslations. 
and Derek Prince does an outstanding job of, of exegeting the Greek. Uh, in fact, in the um, the uh, Christian Standard Bible, they used a proper word. You expel them. They're trespassers. They're squatters in the promised land. They have weaseled their way mm-hmm. in. That, that's who's living in a stronghold. A stronghold is a fortified area, and something's yeah. living in it. And Paul said, you know what? We have authority to pull down those strongholds. And he's mm-hmm. talking about within because they can they can inhabit lies that we've accepted as truth. They can inhabit uh, uh, wrong ideologies. And those are doctrines of demons that we've accepted because of the lies of the past. That's one of the inroads that they can do. And our schools are full of it. And I think there's a demon behind evolution. Oh, for sure. And all these things, they try to make inroads. And it, it's like you, you put a pry bar in and you make the gap bigger and bigger and bigger until they can get bigger, more access to the individual. That's why renewing the mind is so important and taking our authority mm-hmm. and cleaning house and all these things is, is so important in the days ahead because what we got away with in the past, where we're headed, won't fly. It will not fly right. because you're, you know, when, when, and at peacetime, you can play volleyball all the time, but you, you can't do that on the battlefield. No. Well, and we're, we're going to be facing battles like we've never faced before. Uh, it's not anything to be afraid of, but my, my thought has been over these last three or four months, however long I've been delving into this, is, okay, God's getting us ready for something. He, he wants us to get more information. Because that's not something that, um, you know, back when I was, was ministering to people that were programmed multiples, uh, right in the middle of me finding out I was one, <laughs> um, I didn't have anything to draw from. No. I mean, I, you could, I couldn't have found a book on, on deliverance back then. I wouldn't have known where to look. Uh, you know, back then, all I had when God brought me out of that depression, um, outside of, of reading the Word and and what you had known, is I we had a satellite dish and I found um, TBN, and I listened to every person I could listen to. Some of them I I learned right away. Okay, this isn't it. But you know, there was Rod Parsley. Uh, a lot of people I know have a lot of trouble with Joyce Meyer, but she has an anointing to help women that have been abused and incest. Now, outside of that, you know, since since those times when I listened to her, I gained a lot of information. I don't listen anymore because I've there are certain things that they teach I just I stay away from. Well, like Same all thing of them. with Marilyn Hickey, um, John Hagee. Uh, I haven't listened to him in, in a while. But back then, John Hagee, Rod Parsley, they had information I needed. And so God had me extrapolate out of what they were teaching what I needed to know about the authority and, and getting my faith built up. And so I don't listen to any of the faith teachers anymore. I just don't. But not that there's not truth there. There's truth within what they're teaching. But I got so, um, it would just kind of make me sick as they would ask for for the money the way they did. I, I just, my spirit was just going, oh, this isn't right. Because, you know, they'll they'll have a, a church service and they'll say, well, the Lord's telling me if you give $1,000, you're going to get a breakthrough. And I am telling you, Mike, that is not right. No, that's, that's that, Gnosticism. It's, and it's manipulation. Yeah. And it's um, merchandising the anointing was some, some man Rick came Renner up with wrote that. that, that, that uh, spot on. Um, and, you know, I was listening to some of the deliverance ministers, and, and they were comparing it to a palm reader. And I can testify this because when I was 18 years old, I went to one. Um, back then, I didn't know anything. And so, and I was always attracted to anything in the occult, the occult movies, the, all that stuff. And I went to this, this uh, palm reader. And she, she told me something, and she said, now, I can't tell you anymore. You know, it would be more money if you want more information. Now here's and the thought, worm on the hook. <laughs> I thought, this is what's been done in the churches. Yeah. I mean, this it just breaks your heart to, to look back. And so I look, you know, I look back and I think, oh, God, I'm so thankful you let me learn from this person, this person, and you got me the information I needed. Uh, but, oh, God, I'm so heartbroken over what's going on. And I've seen, I've seen effects in some of their lives. Like, um, now, I saw some clips this last week, and it was, I won't mention the name, but it was one of the prosperity teachers, and he was talking about he had asked God to give him I think it was a hundred 
million million dollars. And he went through this thing, and, and, he, and he said he asked God up to five times, and God gave him that. And I'm just thinking, what in the world are you? I, I just, it just blew my mind. And, and I have heard that person speak truth. That's, that's what's so confusing to, to the body. And anybody that, you know, I, 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 Steph and I were talking yesterday, and we were talking about what a gift God gave us when I married Mike, um, because we both were born into mess, and and there's right now I feel sorry for people that that you know are exposed to the internet. Not only it, it's valuable, but there's so much junk on there, Mike. You could get off on all these tangents and never get to the truth. And so I've been so thankful because you know I look back at my life and I think God. I could not have imagined how you put things in order in my life to get me set free and then gave me you as a husband that that was your, their thing was research. Man, you, you know, when when we got married, there were bookshelves and things coming in uh, because you had started, you didn't have much money, but you were getting a hold of anything you could get a hold of. And you had some manuals from Lester Summerall and and different things, and you'd you'd uh, listen to Derek Prince and Bob Mumford and um, so many others, yeah. And so, so you had a wealth of information that was needed for me because as I was learning everything, uh, I needed to get grounded. I needed to know, okay, there's verifiable proof of these things. This is right in line with the Bible, right? And I could always go to you. And, and I, I've always had a wide berth. I mean, from Andrew Murray to. Spurgeon, uh, mm -hmm. uh, many of the reformers and everything. I've always loved to research them because it, uh, I have viewed what God is in the restoration process ever since we came out of the dark ages. ages. He's been trying to restore everything that the early church had and then take us to the next level. And that, that's, that's what I, I'm, I'm seeing. And I, I'm seeing both things because, guys, let me tell you something. Uh, I was asked some things about the, the book of Esther here lately, and I, so I just jumped on the Internet, and I, I was absolutely floored at the misinformation and conspiracy theory and all these different things that uh, none of it had any, there's no citations, there's no, uh, one of them put, even put that it was written in 1462, which would have been about the time that Columbus was sailing, was when, <laughs> but they didn't bother to even put A.D. or B.C., so you don't know if it was, you know, and but I tell you what, they were very good at HDML programming. I mean, it was a slick looking site. It just wasn't the, the information wasn't factual. And and we and you know me, I have I have built for forty years or more. I have been building a library. In fact, my my family groans because we're still looking at all the books we need to move from Seymour here. And Mary rejoiced when uh, logos came out because I have 21,000 volumes of debt that I can just pick up a notebook computer and carry it with yeah, me. Yeah, I, I encouraged him, though, uh, this morning that I think he needs to get hardbacks if you, if you can. Yeah, of the real academic Because there course. could be a time when something yep. goes down and you can, don't have access. Uh, and so I think that that, but I, I've always so valued that. And even people back in that area where I, um, I was raised, there was always people against you. Uh, and and a lot of what was was wrong with uh, with us gave them some ammo for that because yeah. we were we weren't I free. Was, I was very emotionally immature. We and were wasn't free we and weren't free. Uh, but but there was always some people that recognized the gift that God had placed into into you, and I have been so thankful for that because um, you know as I as I was coming out, uh, I could just see I can go back and tell you at the time I I couldn't see it. But now I can tell you the exact moment why God brought me out of that depression here. I, I know the exact reason he, he let me, uh, he had to put me back in my original state before this miraculous transformation that I was free enough to actually read the word and understand, get my faith built up. He had to let me go to that state because that was my DNA, and I had to fight what was on my DNA. Mm -hmm. I had absolutely no clue that there was any witchcraft in my family, any occult activity. He strategically told me to do this, and, and you were right there uh, guiding me, you know, because I was saying, I got it. I can't, I can't get in deception. You know, this is too important. I don't want to, I'll never get out of this. Um, 
And so he would strategically show me this and this and this and have me pray this and this and this. And, and I can look back and tell you there is absolutely no situation that if you can put your trust in Almighty God, he can't take you out of. Yeah, because I look back at some of the things in the 90s that we went through in the midst of our ignorance that we should, we should have been roadkill. But God. Oh, I'm, I mean, miraculous times, Mike. Yes. That he took care of us. Um, and so um, I, I just want to touch on, on some of the things that I think that we've not been taught can really get us in trouble. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, happened to me back when I worked at Fort Leonard Wood was um, – I was sent to a mandatory class on, it was entitled New Age Thinking. I still had that manual at my home when I married you. And, and it was one of the first things you did. You, see, you saw that, you said, you got to get rid of that. That's not good. And I wish I had held on to it. I mean, yeah. you did the right thing because that's not a good thing to have in your house. But I would have loved to have seen what they put in my head. I remember showing up to the building. I can remember what the front of the building looked like. There were military and civilian personnel there with me. I cannot tell you one thing about those classes. Now, you said you didn't have anything like that? No. I don't know if that was peculiar to Fort Leonard Wood? I don't know. I even went through some leadership classes at Fort Leonard Wood, but nothing nothing like that. Well, and I don't know, was it just a specific group of us? Or was it civilians? Were there enlisted there? Or was there officers? Was it just officers and civilians? It was It was or all ranks. Or maybe NCOs? It was all ranks. And, and you were assigned a date that you had to go, and there were other civilian personnel there. I don't know if that was because they were doing mind control experiments. I don't know if that's what that was. I, I looked on the Internet. I thought, well, maybe I can find any information about that. Could not find a thing. Well, the, I, I, know, I know you have a good enough memory. Uh, well, on some things. On, on many things. <laughs> uh, that, uh, especially if it's something that you physically do, okay? Mm-hmm that you can remember, I, I have wondered if it wasn't a programming session simply because there's there's no memory above the, the going into the front None. door. None. Past going past that door. It's like Disney World for yeah. me. Once I went in that Disney World and 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 a a family that's connected to Freemasonry had me buy a pair of Mickey Mouse socks that they wanted to give. So I thought, you know, I better do that first or I'll forget it. So I walk wow. right up to this stand. It wasn't far once you go in the gate. Um, and I bought that pair of Mickey Mouse socks. I cannot tell you one other thing that happened that day. I can't remember seeing Mickey Mouse. Nothing. The only thing that I thought I remembered was that when when the bus went in the gate, that we went inside a... a, a, What would you call it? Parking lot. It's fences, no. tall yeah. fences that you could see through that had Constantine wire up on top. And as far as I can tell, there's nothing like that at Disney well, World. Well, no, and everybody I've ever mentioned that to said, well, that's that's not at Disney World. So I don't know then within that memory if they if they took us to another, like a, a military installation. Uh, I don't, I don't or know. Or a side facility that, that's restricted. You don't, you, you don't know. And, but but I, but I know you that unless there was something like that going on that you would remember. I do have very – when I do remember something, it's down to exact detail. And that's been to yeah. – um, bless your heart, you went through a lot of stuff because, <laughs> because all, I all remember – All it takes is me doing something stupid, and, and it was a calm day that well, day, and the temperature was 72, and you were wearing a blue <laughs> shirt and, 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 and brown shorts. But, but I do think that I yeah. had – I think that was one of the reasons I thought I had a spirit of unforgiveness is because my mind would go back to every single thing. If I ever thought about a person that I was struggling to forgive for something, it would go back every single item. And so, but that one of the reasons I'm talking about Fort Leonard was is, is I had heard just in passing from somebody one day, I don't even know who it was, that they thought that Lieutenant Colonel Aquino, which who was the the one that went with, Anton LaVey, and they were they were working on military psyops. Yeah, and they were. He was deeply involved in MK Ultra and the Monarch Project. And so I, I've never been able to find anything 
where he was associated with Fort Leonard Wood, although somebody said one time they thought that he, he did something there. And this, this was from a Reddit report, and it was talking about during the time when Aquino was being investigated for child abuse and, and all these horrible things. And this, this was in a, a little post part of it in January 1990. It said somebody named Major Harvey speaks with the staff judge advocate at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, to determine what action the commander of Fort Leonard Wood had decided to take in the case. The commander has taken no action against Aquino as a result of the investigation. Now, why would the commanding general of Fort Leonard Wood have anything to do with that unless he... It has to be under his command. Or somebody there at Fort Leonard Wood had accused him of something? I'm not exactly sure how it works. Um, but it, wasn't there was something about the post that he was like with the National Guard Reserve that was there? there was, but I never could find that again. Once I, I found that, then it, I never could get to it again. Because un, unless they added that to the post. Now, the, you know, the, 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 like after I got out in, in 82, mm-hmm. and I was at the command level, so I was in all those offices. There was nothing like that there. But, you know, after I left, they they had brought in like the chemical school. And there oh, were they had a lot of the changes. Engine, and they built yeah. the engineering school. So it may have been, this was like in 1990. Mm-hmm. I, I, one of the things that's always, uh, what was so surprising to me was at long after I got, I quit working at Fort Leonard Wood, I found out that there was a airport airport there. And I thought, how did I work there all those years and didn't know there was an airport there unless I blocked it? TWA with two gates. So could I have been taken and flown out of there? Yeah, it's possible. Because it's, I, I knew where the ranges were. I've, I'd driven out to the ranges because sometimes my yeah. boss would have me come pick him up. And so here's I'd, the thing. You passed the airport on the way to the ranges out, out the, uh, the back gate. I do not remember to this day. I don't. Well, anyway, another odd thing that's going on. Um, but, you know, many, many people from that town that I was raised in work at Fort Leonard. There's just not that much employment. We had a... You know, a shoe factory there in Dixon and, and a few things. But, I mean, a I lot think, of people work yeah. there. And so it's it's one of those things that that I know that the witch that crawled in our van, her father was in the military. Because I remember seeing him in uniform uh, as our bus picked him up sometimes. Um, so there had to be a, a big coordination between the occult the mind control experiments, and all that stuff. So, so my thought is this. You know, this wouldn't have just been at Fort Leonard Wood. This, this had to at least infiltrate all branches of the military. So it's one of those things that I would encourage anybody in the military, you know, even if you received a, a medal with a, a star with a circle around, uh, there's so many things that they could have joined you to or made, made you through an oath you made or, or any kind of thing like that. Those would be things worth looking at and seeing if you need to renounce anything yep. like that. Well, it shows you the extent that the Freemasons had in the formation and everything. I mean, the Medal of Honor, which is the highest thing that a that an, that uh, anybody in the military can receive, and it's the only time, you know, you always salute officers, but if there's an enlisted and you see that he has the little pin where he's got the Medal of Honor, you salute him like an officer. I mean, there's that high of an honor. It's a Baphomet. It's an upside-down star. And we we just don't realize, you know, I didn't think they put it's it that, on there upside down. Yeah, it's up, it's a Baphomet. It's upside down star. Oh. Uh, that's that's the Medal of Honor with the with the with the, the the top point pointing down. Oh, I didn't know that. And so, well, I mean, any you, you look at all and you go, golly. And, well, and the the military is full of Freemasons, or it used to be. Yeah. Because my first um, introduction to that, I thought, because I had forgot that my. Sister joined Eastern Star, and my brother-in-law was the Shriner. Now, how I forgot that is another one of those blockout points. And then after my sister reminded me, I remembered my brother-in-law walking up with the red fez hat on at a, they'd taken us to a shrine circus. Um, but, I mean, I had totally blocked that out. And so I worked with a man that was studying for a degree. And, and so during the lunch hour, um, or if there was a spare time, he had this little white book and he and it was kind of like a code it was like where there was were letters mentioned but if if you were looking at you could tell okay that's that word and and so he wanted to he was supposed to say that verbatim and so he said well you take this and see if I'm saying it right and he showed me some things on there and so he started going down through this thing and I thought 
I thought, you call this person a worshipful master? And I mean, this is, I'm fallen state. I'm in bad, bad shape. Uh, but I thought, I don't think anybody should be called master except Jesus. You know, that Much was less one. worshipful. And then he started going through these oaths that he's taken. And I just started getting so sick to my stomach. I thought, you're going to take an oath for your tongue to be torn out? And all this stuff. I mean, I was just, and so I happened to mention that to my, my brother-in-law and his brother-in-law one day that he what he'd said on that. And they both got red faced and were so angry. They said, he should have never showed you that. And so I went, okay. Um, well, well, you know, and, and I think it even goes with promotion in, in the military. Uh, when I was at uh, 3rd Infantry Division, I was with the SGS under the Secretary General, and so we had a lot of promotional packets went through. And it was about that time I was listening to Derek Prince that was dealing with Freemasonry, and so it was, it was kind of on my radar. And they would have, you know, uh, uh, this is what they've done. They've done a great job. Here's their education. Then you would have extracurricular things. And they would list all this stuff. But they would always put in all capitals and bold if they were a Freemason on what level so that it would stand out and jump out in their review. Mm-hmm. And I'd been here since I thought of that. And I thought, even back then, I thought, that's really weird. It was like it was, this guy should be promoted. It, was, it, it, kind, of, it kind of gave you that impression because you know how the, the, NCI, the, the NCO reviews are done and, and stuff for promotion. Well, I, I had worked with uh, a man in the military one time, and I, you know, this was stupid to even consider this, but I'd got a speeding ticket. And so I, I said, I, I need time off. I need to sign my time card. I'm going to need time to go pay this ticket. And he said, he said, well, where'd you get it? And I said, oh, just off post here because I was speeding. And so he said, oh, he said, I know the judge. He said, uh, you go, and when you go to court, you just you just mention my name, and and he'll write this off for you. And I thought, how in the world does that work? But you know, I Makes just. Sense. And so anyway, I showed up the thing, and and uh, and it wasn't there. And so I had the option of you pay it or you have to be rescheduled and come back. And I thought, no, I'm just going to pay. It. I don't want to mess with it. And when I look back on this, I thought, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that that judge went there because that was probably a Mason yeah. that was going to talk to his fellow Mason, and that was how that was going to happen. It that was, was be another and, hook in you. And your see, th- that was injustice. Yeah. I should have paid the ticket. I was speeding. Yeah. And I was so stupid back then. You know, just so my front consciousness, and this is the way they do you when they mind control you, your front consciousness is just kind of riding along and, uh, you know, and you can do your job and you can all this stuff. But you just kind of feel how I felt my whole life was just really uninformed. I just felt like, okay, I'm going through everything. I'm really uninformed. Well, and I think so, a lot of people without the mind control are that way because I, I know, I know of, of believers that say, well, what a blessing. That's just so awesome. No, because uh, that that would have that would have created a tie, a connection to that individual. Well, and that's I think God spared us from a lot of those. Yeah. And, and you, he's he's so wonderful. I just can't say enough about Almighty God. And and you know you may be in a situation you may be listening and thinking, well, I don't think anybody can get me out of this. You would be surprised. Almighty God can orchestrate things that you couldn't even imagine because I can look back in both of our lives and see every attack of the enemy. It's clear as a bell now, but back then we couldn't see it, but God saw every bit. And he He was saying, you know, one of these days, they're going to be older, but when Mike and Mary get to this place, I'm going to use them. And so the enemy somehow was picking up on something and was trying to do everything he could, in my case, to make me feel so worthless I could never do anything. Yeah. And, and I think you got attacked that way too. Yeah, I did. And, you know, I, I look back uh, even in the 90s when all this stuff was going on compared to where I'm now. And I, in fact, I think I told you this morning that I like who I am now. I don't like who I used to be. Uh, and thank God for the, the saving grace and the and the – power of God, the the maturing grace that comes from oh, God. Oh, and that's the truth. Because I look Thank back God. at that and I feel like in my stupidity, I was blindfolded playing hopscotch in a minefield. <laughs> that's, well, that's, I, that's about the truth. And and you know what? I, we were talking the other day about how do, how do people in ministry get in scandals and they're still able to preach truth and stuff, but that, that anointing is there, the, the call on their life, and, and where it says... Um, 
you know, that they, they can operate, I guess, in the gift stays there for so long God can use it. But then probably he gives them so much time to con, to uh, confess repent. and repent. Otherwise he reveals it. And then he reveals and it. And there's also a principle we see when God judged the priesthood in the Old Testament. And you had the sons of Zadok, the ones that were righteous before God. And God says, you know what? They can come minister to me. All the rest of you, you can go minister to the people. And so we, we have a lot of ministers that are running off the gift that may have an anointing when they're sharing the word, and now that anointing will lift the moment they quit teaching what God wants, but they have no time with God. They, they have no relationship with God anymore because God says, as long as that's in your life and it's not been confessed, you're not coming near me. And I think that's one of the reasons sometimes you'll see um, – you know, somebody under the anointing that has a relationship with God preaches something, and then all of a sudden it's like a bunch of parrots across the body of Christ start preaching the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not always that way because sometimes it's, I'm just going to see what's popular, and then they're getting a big crowd. Maybe I can get a big crowd, but I think some of them are doing it because there's an anointing on that. They don't have the relationship with God to get the message themselves, and so they're parroting what they hear. Well, we've heard of ministers before that just get their Sunday sermon off of the Internet. Yeah. You know, and so, I, and I've I had times in the past, like, um, there was one that I told Mike about uh, a dream I had, and I said, this was what was in the dream, and I didn't have a clue what it was. I just prayed for the person. And then now, I, th I looked back and I thought, oh, now I know what that dream meant. Um, but it's, yeah. I think we're going to be more and more shocked at what's coming out. And, and I think a lot of these people where, where they're the scandals and things and they're saying they led a dual life, I think these are, uh, some of these people are programmed. Yeah. Because they, some of it they wouldn't, I, now if, if they remember what they did, then they, they know what they've done. But I'm just saying, I wonder if some of them have done something and, and been awakened and saw that they were in the middle of something because I do think yeah, that's, that's different than somebody just living a double life. Right, and there's a lot right. of people that are duplicitous like that. Uh, in fact, I, I read an article uh, just yesterday in, in the, the news aggregate that I use that there was a young boy, just barely 18 years old, and he ended up getting killed over something, and his family was just aghast. And they said, how in the world that this kid's a straight-A student and all these different things? And so they hired an investigator and found out, he, as a teenager, he had a double life. And I don't think he was programmed. I, th I think that he got involved in stuff that he did not want his parents to find, so he was living so a double he, life. So people can just hide it yes. and then just separate the lives. And then separate that, their lives, yeah. Well, that can be. But, well, uh, I, I think the main thing that we're trying to get across today, uh, and I actually have a book I'm going to recommend to you guys, um, is that there are so many things we've been exposed to that we weren't taught. At least I don't remember ever hearing a sermon about this when I was young. Is like, you know, one of the things I used to do all the time uh, is newspaper or magazine or something as I'd read my horoscope. And I'd talk to my sister about that. You know, this is what the... Um, that's, that's not good. It's divination. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems harmless. You know, you just think, oh, and you just kind of laugh at it usually. Uh, but once we open that door, we've opened the door to the influence of a spirit. Yeah. And so, in my in my opinion, if anyone, um, you know, if you if you feel stable enough to do it yourself, I think people can do self deliverance. I mean, I did that with you, with me, because there wasn't a person I trusted anywhere. And, and, you know, I talked before, I worked with, with a person that had been supposedly trained in how to um, work with program multiples, and um, she set my programming off. And, and at the time, I, I made note of it. You heard what she said. And so then I, I went and I did some research, and I thought, oh, my word, this is what this is what she just did, and I didn't even realize she did it. Um, and now I, I don't think she had a bad heart. I think she herself was a program multiple and didn't even realize what she did. Yeah. But isn't that scary to think that the people that are supposed to be helping the program multiples may be multiples themselves sent in, you know? It's, and I didn't know who to trust. So what I did is I, is I remembered everything that I could think of, and, you know, going to that palm reader, anything like that. I would just repent, and then I would, I would sit in front of Mike and I'd say, because I, I had watched this with that woman. I did see that with that woman, is she would pray with people, and I would see the 
pupil in their eye go down to almost you couldn't even see it. It was like a, a, the end of a pen, a little with, And little without the lights needle. getting, you know, real yeah, bright. Yeah, they just go, it, it was like something was hiding. Uh, and, and since that time, I have seen that an enormous amount of times. I'll just be sitting next to somebody, and they're just talking away. And just because I'm looking at them, that, that their eye, that pupil will go. It's almost non-existent. And I'm thinking, okay, so something's hiding. How are you even seeing me? Because <laughs> I, I think I've seen this stuff my whole life and just didn't understand it. You know, but what you did in, in that process is brought out in Derek Prince's book, Expelling Demons. Mm-hmm. And he said, number one, make sure you're saved. Number two, make sure that you have confessed every sin. Because the, the, the sin gives them legal right to be there. And the third one, I think, is the hardest for a lot of people. You gotta, you gotta let go of unforgiveness. Because yeah, you have to choose to forgive anybody that's hurt you. My faith, whether like you that. feel like it or yeah. not, because unforgiveness will be a stronghold that they can live in. And he, and what he said is, you know, once we do these basic things, he said deliverance is is, is fairly easy because they have nothing to grasp to hold on yeah. to. Yeah, and I do think though that that is real. That um, the sin or the spirit of unforgiveness yes. i think that that you can be in a family and that spirit's attached and to where like you can choose to forgive and choose to forgive and you just can't get over it and can't get over it. and and you know when when we really forgive and, and there's no spirit of unforgiveness there i believe that that it's just done yeah you know the difference is sometimes uh, and sometimes you're dealing with that tap root of, of unforgiveness you yeah know. and it takes a while it doesn't yeah. mean that every you time have you that, forgive you're pulled in sometimes yeah. you think dear well, lord this thing's going all the way to china sometimes people will re-wound you faster and you can forgive them yeah and and so it's it, but you know when you i, I think you revive uh, you, you you arrive in that area uh, as far as having to forgive by faith forgive by faith it gets to the place that when you think of that situation you're no longer angry or no longer hurt, that means that forgiveness has taken hold completely. Well, and I, one of the, the <laughs> books that I, I'm reading through and rereading and trying to glean some information from is, I think, would be a, a good book for any Christian to have. Um, it's by John Eckhart. It's E-C-K-H-A-R-D-T. Uh, and I've listened to, I haven't listened to, um, to him talk except briefly in one interview, but I've listened to people that he trained. And it was absolutely fascinating because unless you've been with somebody that's done a lot of deliverance, there's so many things they run into that an average minister would never see. And I even think that he's run into mind control programming that he may not have even known what he was dealing with, but God just showed him what to do. Uh, and I'll give an example of that in a minute. But, but I think for if you, if you feel like you're just struggling and there may be something you don't know that's um, just lugging on you or, or someplace where you feel like you're getting attacked, I think that this is an excellent book to take you through self-deliverance. Yes. You know, where I did with Mike, where I'd sit in front of him and I'd say, you watch my eyes. If I get any, because one of the things is you'll get a real red circle under the bottom of your eyes. That's a particular spirit that's there. The others will hide through the eyes, but you're going to tell mostly through the eyes. Because I didn't have any big manifestations. I would just feel this thing in my stomach and and it would come up and up and up and up and then then it would be gone. Um, But I would have Mike watch me and I'd say, now you... um, you know, I bind up anything that's going to try to hinder this. And I would just confess, and I'd confess. And I, and that's what I did with the Jezebel spirit, is I, I'd say, Mike, you know, I, I cast it out and it left. But I thought, man, I didn't do the stuff that needs to be done to make sure it wasn't still there. And I, and I mean, this thing was so connected um, to my family that it had deep roots and stuff. So it took me years to actually cut that off. And I had to... I had to redo, let God renew my mind so that my thoughts weren't exactly yeah. in line with its thoughts. Because the whole time that it was, it was there, it was training you to think like it. Because when these things are present, they will, they will teach you how to think. That's, mm-hmm. that's doctrines of demons. Yep. Doctrine is biblically on how to live, how to react to the world around you. Uh, they will actually convince you that their feelings and the emotions that they have are yours. And uh, you'd be surprised when somebody goes through deliverance that all of a sudden they feel different, they view the world different, all these different things. Uh, you know, one of the rules of thumb that I always do, Mary, and, you know, in, in the sanctification process, you know, I've just been in prayer and reading the Word, and God would bring up to me uh, something that I hadn't thought of in years. That was, you know, something stupid that I did or, or whatever. 
And so when I repent of it, when, when, when the Holy Spirit brings it up and I repent of it, then I command anything that had entrance to my life because of that sin, I bind it up and I expel it out of my life because there was, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't a, uh, a demonic presence there or, or if God reminds me of, of something where somebody hurt me deeply. Okay, and I, and I forgive them. Okay, now anything that came because of that wound, because the devil is a sneaky little bugger. Mm-hmm. And if he can't get you to do a sin to open the door, he'll get somebody under his control to wound or hurt you. And in that wound, they will inject a demonic force. Right, because I don't think there can be a wound unhealed that doesn't have a spirit attached to it. Exactly. Did I say the name of the book? It's Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. It says A Comprehensive Guide to Living Free. And I just think it's so good. I wanted to to read you just a couple of little things. Um, Let me find it here. He talks about um, there's animal and insect spirits, and I totally believe this. He says there's one called the leech, bloodsucker. How many times have you heard me mention about certain people, and I said it's like they're bloodsucker. They suck the life out of it. It says, a leech is a person who clings to another for personal gain, especially without giving anything in return, a parasite. To leech is to cling to and feed upon or drain, as a leech does, to exhaust and deplete. A leech is a bloodsucker, a disgusting parasite that attempts to suck the life out of you. And he mentions Proverbs 30, 15. The leech has two daughters, give and give. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the truth. But I've actually called people that. I I must have personally. And, and see, this is why this is valuable information. I perceived a spirit there, but I didn't know what I was perceiving. I yeah. just, I said, they're blood suckers. Mike. Yeah. They're blood suckers. There's, there's not Wukalar in there. No. Like with Tim Conway, they suck your brain right out your nose, but sometimes you feel like it. And I wanted to, to give one more excerpt so you can know about this. Um, it it's talks about Leviathan, and it talks about stripping Leviathan scales. And I thought... Now, this maybe this is in just a person that has extreme pride, but I thought this sounds so much like mind control programming that I don't know that, th- that the, he hasn't come across this and said, okay, this is it. And God was just totally showing him this mind control program so he could get the people set yeah. free. And I just want to read a little bit of this. Uh, it says, Leviathan's thick coat of skin is referred to as male, Job 41.13. Mail, M-A-I-L, is how it's uh, spelled, is armor made of metal links or of plates. Armor is used for defensive purposes. Jesus stated that a stronger one must come upon the strong man, overcome him, and take away his armor in which he trusts, according to Luke eleven twenty two. Leviathan is a strong man whose armor must be stripped. And it says Leviathan's pride is in his scales, according to Job forty one fifteen. This spirit is proud of his ability to withstand attack, Pride is able to shield himself with other spirits symbolized by scales and act as protective shields. The spirit of Leviathan will use these other spirits as shields in order to protect himself from attack. These shield demons must be dealt with first before an attack on Leviathan can be successful. I thought, that sounds exactly like what they put in program multiples as defenses and shields to where you never get to where the real demon is. Exactly. It says some people will not receive deliverance from Leviathan because his kingdom is so often protected by his scales. And the scales are rejection, lust, hurt, insecurity, shame, fear, self-righteousness, and religious spirits are all demons usually encountered in deliverance. These give a person reasons to hold on to pride. Leviathan's strength can only be destroyed as we strip away the demons that shield him. And I, I heard a testimony of a minister that this man trained, and he was talking about they were praying hours and hours with this person, could not get uh, deliverance. And then uh, he found this book, and he went against each one of these spirits, the shields. Once they got it down, they got the guy delivered. Yeah. And, and I wondered, I thought, oh, the, the enemy's so so uh, sneaky and and hides things and i thought how many times have people spent 12 hours trying to get somebody delivered when that's what's there is there's a protective shield that's what i saw that was discouraging to me in those early years is is it was like you could you could see the demon was there it was smiling at you it was smirking like you can't get me and then god would give me some prophetic insight i could see something and and then i could get it um and one of the things that it was interesting, too, is they talk about 
they call it a mind control spirit. Yes, I was and they, they said it will either look either look like an octopus or a squid. Do you remember the time when I, I was praying and I said, okay, God's showing me an octopus. It's got tentacles. So we're going to have to go each one of the tentacles. Yeah. So no wonder Satan has fought the people with discernment and fought people with prophetic gifts because you can tear through what looks like an impossible uh you know situation situation yeah. and and some and a construct it's like it's like they build these places in your head they construct it with with uh, you know it's that time when i told you that I was um i pulled something from the presidential seal up there in washington through this one woman um and it wasn't in her she was connected to it which means she had to be on one of the points of the star but but and the fact that how God orchestrated me ever being where that woman was is an, is beyond belief. But uh, when I I had been fasting and praying, um, I went over, and I didn't even know what I was going to do. I just knew God wanted me to go pray, so I went there, and it was like God took me through the most unbelievable uh, locks. Um, it's like a you know, what do you do when you, you open up a, one of those locks like that's on your locker at school? You go through combination locks. This, this, this. It was like boom, 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 boom. And I couldn't remember it for anything when I got done with it. Um, but I, it was unbelievable. what and, and what happened is when I got through the combinations and all the things that God told me, it popped open, and I, and I, I called it by name. I said, Jezebel come out in Jesus' name. And she didn't scream. Something behind her screamed. Big, long scream as it came through. And then when it got there, I said the prayer and told it what to do. And uh, after that now, all she said was, I felt like you took my friend away. So whatever that thing was, was a friend to her. Mm -hmm. And, and I, now this would have been done when she's a little girl. Yeah. Isn't that horrible? Doesn't that just infuriate you that Satan has taken these little children, put them in situations that it looks like it's impossible for them to get out of? In situations like that, you have a combination of occultism going on. You have uh, mind control going on. I mean, when this stuff gets real complicated, because when they, when Aquino and all those were developing the Monarch Project and all that, they would use a combination of, of ritual, incantation, and placing demons, and psychology and physiology because they were creating, using trauma uh, to create those places. And they would literally, you know, it, let, let's say a, a normal individual, let's say they go through trauma and they, there's, so there's a, a, a fracture in their mind. Given enough time, that fracture naturally will want to heal. So they would put a demon in that fracture to keep that in place so there would never be any healing. Just like if you've got a wound, there's yeah. a spirit that will come to make sure you don't get healed because as long as you've got that wound, they got yeah. access. And so a lot of these, other, that's why some of this stuff is complicated. And I have wondered, because I've read, I've read through it, I'm getting ready to go back through it again. Uh, some of the things like the, the mind control spirit, and I, I have wondered if uh, without them knowing about mind control, if they didn't have the, the the perception of the Holy Spirit showing them what to do, that they were doing deliverance as well as deprogramming all at the same time to, to take these things out. Uh, it, it seems logical to me. Well, it's I, I've walked through enough crazy-looking situations and bizarre situations to see the intricacies involved in mind control programming. And it used to discourage me until I walk through so much of it to see that God can outdo any of it. Yeah. He, we, he just has to have his people that he can use to pray people through and different things. Now, this is my opinion. I can't give you scripture and verse on this, but I believe that that was, that was a spirit that was actually a ritual done um, in Washington. That was placed there. To prepare Connect. it, prepare that place for Hillary Clinton to come in. I think that what Tom Horn said about she may have been that that child that was um, conceived during that that one ritual. Yeah, with uh, Jack Parsons. And I think it, it makes sense. I think they were preparing that place for. And I actually have a memory of being told years ago when I was taken to Arkansas that she was being prepared to be president. And so um, God derailed that, didn't he? He did. And I'm not saying that 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 that's 
what happened with me. I think that was some part of something that had to be broken. Um, but I can tell you from experience that God can undo anything. We just have to trust him. And so what my thought is, is on this book, if, if you are in a stable condition, now if you're a mind control victim that's looking, listening to me and you are not um, in st- stability, if, if you are not really stable, maybe, maybe having some issues or something, but, um, but you're stable, I think this book will help you. I don't think you should get this if you are in an unstable state. Yeah. And that you are not ready to do self-deliverance or have like a support team with a husband or, or people to help you. Because we've been referring people to groups that that have support teams. And, and to me, if you're going to deal with, with people that need deliverance, you need more than one person. You need a support team, which is something we've never had here. Yeah. That's why we, we just haven't went down this road before. Um, I had to deal with what was in front of me back in the 90s. Well, when you're thrown in the fight, you don't have much um, other choice to do it but um i i think that this is excellent for someone that's stable and just thinks you know maybe there's something in my life that that i need to kick out so i can be uh, bulletproof for what's coming i think it'd be excellent if you're if you're a person that is not in that position i would not buy this i would go to uh, counselors to train counselors yeah and and we have recommended several to to people that have, have called and emailed. Um, and so, but I, I think this is excellent for your average Christian because I don't think that there's any of us that, that hasn't been affected by something. It's, it's just too set up. It's, our society's full of it, and it's been decades and decades of preparation and TVs and not being told to guard our eyes and our ears and not being told to, you know, what things can open the door to the enemy. And so I just I feel like that this is really a good a good book to start with, you know, if you're going and it also gives you like it talks about self deliverance in here and has prayers. Um, I just think it's excellent. And uh, there's probably gonna be more things I recommend as as we go along. I just have never delved much into this um, because we just had an assignment and we were sticking I was sticking to whatever God was telling me to do at the time. Uh, but I have I have felt like God's telling me to look at this, and and so for anybody that's, I I just think the the whole section on Leviathan is priceless, because I would have never never thought about that, and and there's so much good information in here on, uh, and it's just one scripture after another. That's what I love when you get. And he, he's got a lot of little books on prayers that route demons and, and different things that uh, mm-hmm. that are really good too. Uh, also, Derek Prince's book on expelling demons is very good, as well as breaking generational curses. And uh, I mean, a lot of these you can get; they're very affordable on Amazon. Yeah, we. That's where we got ours. Yeah, and so, um, I just I'm just getting angrier and angrier at the attacks against the people, though. And you know, I've been I've been holding back and not really doing the kind of warfare that I did back in the '90s. Because, I mean, I was going after it. I was so angry at what had been done. I was so angry when I saw what, what, what had been done in that area where I lived and little children and all the stuff that was going on. I thought, I'm coming after this. <laughs> and um, I really had to, to work on myself because I would do stupid things. You know, I was going to follow that witch. I was going to say, I'll find you wherever you're going in the woods. I'll find you. And then one of the guys that his wife uh, he was worried about being in some of this stuff, and he actually did follow her. And he's deceased now, so I don't mind talking about this. They can't hurt him. Uh, but they, he said that he came up on a ritual. He said he wouldn't tell me where it was, just the county that it was in. And he said uh, that he watched his wife engage in activities with many men. And he said that it was a guarded place. I mean, they had all kinds of. I mean, yeah, he said he was. Snipers around all he said that he was lucky to get out of there with his life. <clears throat> but he uh, he had children that had been involved in this, and these little children were coming to our ser- services. This little storefront church we had when all this stuff was going on, and Steph would do little Bible stories for him back at the back. We didn't have, it was just a little place, but they had a door that she could get back there and just read Bible stories to him. And she came up to me one day and she said, <clears throat> Mom said they're drawing, um, they're drawing 
upside down stars all over the place. Like if they they'd foam, you know, like breathe on the window and and draw things, and upside down crosses. And she said, "Mom, what? Why are they doing?" And so I started praying about it. And then uh, one of the times when the guy walked across the street, that I said, "I'll I'll help you get out of this." And he he turned and looked at me and says. Oh, I'm fine. You're the one that's going to need all the help. And and when I saw him and he said that, I looked over to the side, and there was the mother of these girls looking right at him for direction, that he she was taking orders from him. Um, so I, I kind of started praying about that. She brought them in there dressed in like the little wedding dress things that you wear at rituals that, that I had a memory of. <clears throat> Of when that I've seen or something somewhere back in there, and that was before this happened. And so then I did a little research and found out that they do these marriage ceremonies to Lucifer, and and they dress the girls up in oh, it's just so awful. I hate to even mention those things, but um, I just I learned the hard way, and and I was gonna go. I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna get these kids out of there. And so I was sitting there one day, and I was planning this, and God said, Mary. He said, uh, you can find this place. He said, if you go there and get those kids, you know, get those kids out of there. He said, I'm going to protect your life no matter what you do. If you get those kids out of there, he said, what are they going to do? They're going to accuse you of kidnapping. And then you're going to say, I just saw them in a ritual, and they're going to laugh you out of a court. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought, well, I guess I better get stop being stupid. Yeah, because the courts, <laughs> the minute you bring up any type of ritual abuse, Mm-hmm. Is immediately dismissed, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know I started seeing just how big this thing was, guys, and it is no surprise to me that there is something going on the, at the border with human trafficking. No surprise whatsoever. We better pray for Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, that I th- I think this is a good move. Our governor went down there. I'm and Arkansas. Governor went down there. I mean, there's there's a group of states of us in here that fifteen of fifteen. Well, there were I think twenty something across the country that supported them, saying no, we're not going to do what the Supreme Court said. You know, they're they're standing on the constitution. the constitution that the state has the right to defend its borders, and obviously there is absolutely no defense by the administration that's in there. And, and, and you talk about demons. You, you know, one of the reasons maybe you guys need to read this book is because there are full of them coming across there. I saw a little um, clip that Glenn Beck shared. It was a cell phone recording of a reporter that was watching them come over the border. And this one, one man came across and he said, Sir, would you like to give me your name? And he looked so evil and turned around. And he said, "Soon everyone will know my name." What do you think that was? That's Terrorist. one of these people that have been sent over here. That's that's they've got this, you know, the the control center to where they're all supposed to go off at one time. Now, do I think prayer can stop things? Yes, I do. Do I think that we are the America is in a precarious position? Oh my word. Oh, my word, do you realize how weak the church is? Do you realize how much sin's in the church? Do you realize that you can't even get Christians to, to stop doing Valentine's Day? And, and you think, oh, Mary, that doesn't mean anything. Yes, it does. You have participating in a pagan ritual. And if you don't think that Satan can use that against you and, and hurt you with that and make you a part of the Borg that we have been put into where I'm going to feel you so full of sin that you don't even know you're doing, that you're going to be a perfect target for me. And don't you ever think that you can stand against my army of all these people I'm bringing into America. Don't you ever think that you can stand against this because you're too weakened by your sin. That's what he's saying. You know, I, I was just on an interview yesterday uh, with a radio station out in the Osho. And one of the things he, he said, he said, listen, he said, he said, just in our area, because they're just the hop, skip, and jump from where we are. He said, I get phone calls all the time, and we, we get the same thing literally around the world, of people looking for churches that are actually preaching the word. Mm-hmm. And they say, we can't find any. And he said, he goes, what I did is, he said, I've been, he said, I've been doing this radio show for years. And he said, besides the church I go to, he said, I really don't know who's out there. And he said, so I started visiting churches 
each Sunday, a different church each Sunday. And he said, you call this church? You, you call that preaching the word? And he said, he goes, I didn't know the state of the church. I was mm-hmm. just busy doing what I do, kind of like we do. And he said, he said, I had to tell those people, you, you may need to hunker down in, in your house and, and open up the word of God for yourself because I can't find one that I would really recommend anybody to go to. That's the state that the body of Christ is in. And Mary, it's not just indicative. I hear the same thing from Canada. I hear the same thing from Australia, New yeah, Zealand, the same. Uh, the same thing in, in, in different places in Europe. Uh, I've even heard it coming out of Africa. Do you, you know, I, was, I don't even know anybody in Africa. It's like I don't do and well if you go if you go to a, a church, even a good church that I know there are good pastors there, almost all of them do Halloween. Mm-hmm. They do a trunk or treat, they have candy, they and there's and they're so restricted. Almost every church does Easter egg hunts. And and everybody says, Oh, that doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It all it all matters. And the way that we do modern church services, that man of God does not have enough time to even deliver anything but a snack meal from the Word of God. I mean, you can't do anything in 20 minutes. Well, and a lot of them have more than one service, so they just got to get through it. You rack know? them, pack them, and stack them, yeah. yeah. But they just don't realize that we've not been taught that Satan will use anything he can, he can use. Yeah. And they think if they pretty it up and they don't, you know, it's the same thing I did. I, I'm not saying anything to anybody that I didn't do. I prettied up Halloween back when we used to decorate it. I wouldn't let there a witch be there, and and you know my Boy, kids. We went from could, that to Hallelujah Day. You know my kids could dress <laughs> up like I dressed up my youngest in an apple one time, and oh, she went and and won the Halloween uh, contest, and she got one of those little Cabbage Patch dolls that are, are cursed. I mean, it was just a perfect setup. Now I wasn't gonna let any witch in there. Yeah. But how long was it after that she got really sick? You see what I'm saying? Well, and we, back then we were clueless that Halloween is one of the times that a, a child sacrifice is required. So mm-hmm. as the, the occult are sacrificing children around the world, we're sitting here playing Halloween. Well, it's the same thing with February 14th. Yeah. It's it's same thing for Christmas. sexual ritual, lupercalia. Yes. And so when you participate in that... It, it opens the door up to spirits of lust, spirits of perversion, all this stuff. And then we wonder why everybody, including a whole bunch of pastors and Christians, are hooked on pornography. Yeah. And guys, let me, let, me, let me give you a little secret. You can be romantic 365 days out of the year. That's love, true. Love, he does. <laughs> love, love your wife. He and loves be, me. <laughs> yes, I do. And, and I and, love you. And, you know... Most of us guys, we we spend so many years stuck on stew. But how about just the, treating your wife like the wonderful woman of God that she is, he and keeps, love on her? He keeps trying to say, "I want to take you on a date. I want to take you on a date." And I said, "Honey, we don't have time to go on a date. <laughs> There's too much going on." And then but I'm we're sad. gonna we're gonna fix a date. Yeah, then we're I'm gonna sad. we didn't even get to to go out like anniversary time or anything. Uh, so we're gonna get one. But we're, there's just a lot going on. A lot of people in crisis, and we're gonna we're gonna do what God tells us to do. But I I do recommend this book. I think it's excellent. For for every person, and maybe if not for you, maybe if you don't have any problems, maybe you've got a family member that's struggling, and and there's a, a some prayers in here that could really help. I think I think it's worth it because I think this this is the time that we need to pray more than ever before that horrible things don't happen. I personally don't believe we're going to get away from all of it. I think no. that it can be mitigated. I think that God's mercy can flow, that he can protect his people in the middle of whatever. But I'm, there's too much innocent blood been shed and too many people still fighting to do it. You have the Supreme Court make a ruling and they go to the states and say, well, our state's sure going to continue to spill this blood. Yes. And so, so when you have that going on and on and on and you... There's only one option. If we're going to survive at all, God's got to bring some judgment. He does. And, you know, my heart and what, what I see, and, and this, this is for a remnant believer, that judgment can pour all around us, but God can make our home a Goshen. That, that's why, you know, he, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, it can be all around him, but it's not going to come near him. I, I think that that is a promise for today, 
That, that's why getting the ites out is so important. That's why staying free of sin is so important. That's why getting in the mm-hmm. Word of God is so important. And, and daily, Lord, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. If there's any place in my life that he has not flooded into yes. in there and filled that, Father, show that oh, to me. Show it to and us, if there's Father. anything I need to show repent of, us. I repent of right now. Now, Holy Spirit, fill it up. Yes. Fill it up. Overflow. Clean it out. Overflow. And I, I pray that out. every day. There's not a day goes by that I don't bind up Jezebel, Ahab, Athaliah, yeah. uh Leviathan and, and everyone that I can think of, you're, you're not going to mess with me. Not, you're not going to mess with my family. family. You're not going to mess with our ministry in the name of Jesus. And here's, the, here's some good news. We, our kids were already in a mess with us and, and were exposed to all this junk. Didn't, so, so we already got in a mess. If there's young people, that are young people listening to me with, with your little babies, you have an opportunity, unlike any other generation, to, to say, right. I'm not going to let this affect my kids. I'm going to see everything that's being done, everything that, that the enemy's getting a hold of. And, and not only is my bloodline getting clean, but you're not touching my babies. Yes. You have an opportunity. And it's one of the reasons I stood where I stood. Yes. Is I, I thought, this has got to stop. And, I, and I'm believing we're going to see a generation of young people that have never been involved in Mystery Babylon. In yeah, I believe it. Right, whatsoever. I believe it. And, and it, they will be powerhouses. Yes. Because God will say, okay, these babies don't have all these holes in them that paganism is, has made and these doors to the enemy. So I'm going to raise them up like a generation nobody's ever seen. I'm going to fill them with my spirit. I'm going to pour my spirit out upon them. And they're going to be warriors. Yes, yes. That's what we're after. And I'm going to see a remnant that when God's done with them, they're going to look like Navy SEALs in the kingdom of God. Yeah. They will. And they're, they're going to not only be fierce in battle, but fierce in love, fierce in the things of God. And they're going to know the word of God yes. backwards and forwards. Yes, they will. Be mighty warriors for yes. God. Mighty men of valor. Mighty women of valor. So why don't you pray, and then I'll, I'll end it with my prayer and... Well, we Father, I, this thing up. I thank you for, for the anointing that's being poured down on all of us right now. Yes. I thank you for the anointing that we not only are going to be delivered ourselves and every door closed to the enemy, but we're going to see other people set free. Father, I ask that the anointing that you told me was going to come through this podcast today is going to go into every listener's home. Father, I'm asking that if they're in bondage, you're going to make a way out for them, that you're going to show them, that you're going to lead them to the right place. Father, if, if, they're, if they're somebody that's, that thinks that they're called to the deliverance ministry, Father, I ask that you would anoint them, that you would show them exactly what to do. Father, I believe you're building, yeah. you're building that army. Father, I believe it, and we're going to be grandma and grandpa to these babies that are coming up that are going to be warriors and um, young men and women that have already started this process coming out coming out of this coming out of babylon that's what we're doing we're coming out of babylon father we're coming out of egypt and we believe that there's not, not going to be any sick among us because you're going to restore us down to the dna level you're going to yes. break this stuff off of us and we're going to be loosed to do what you've called us to do. And Father, I ask that this anointing would absolutely overflow the airways, that it would not go only go in the airways that are that are resounding with your, your anointing right here, but Father, into every listener's home, into every person, even if they're listening to me because they're a witch and they just want to scoff me, I ask that the power of, of God's anointing for deliverance would flood over where you're at right now, that you would feel the power of God, you would drop to your knees, and that you would cry out for God to save you. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Well, Father, we pray over the room. Father, I, first of all, Father, I ask that you would shake us, wake us. Father, that you'd break every bondage off of our life. We command the bondages to be broken. Father, that you would least release the anointing of the breaker right now over your people. Father, we command bondages to be released. Father, we command strongholds to come down. Father, we command the enemy, wherever you have made inroads in our lives, we expel you right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. How dare you try to get into the temple of yes. Almighty God. And Father, if there's anything that we need to repent of, Father, we open up our hearts to the yes. Holy Spirit. Show us, and we will repent. We will make things right. We will forgive. Father, get us to the place where we can say like Jesus said, Satan has nothing in me. Father, I ask right now that you loose the fire of heaven. Father, first to empower your people. Father, second to burn off every bondage in their life. 
And Father, third, to judge the occult for what they have done. Father, time's up. Yes. Woe be to those Time's up. that have attacked the remnant. Yes. Woe, Woe be to those Woe to that you. have went after those that have the anointing of God on their lives and they have a destiny for God. Woe be unto them. Repent or, or you're going to have a visitation from God. Or be judged. Yes. Or be judged in the name of Jesus. Father, set us on fire with the kingdom. Fill us up with your spirit. Father, give us a hunger for the word of God like we have never had before. And Father, teach us to walk in your kingdom and teach us to be warriors, we ask. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.